Yeah. All right, Saga, what are you looking at? Well, I know some of you are sick of hearing me talk about the lab leak <laughs> hypothesis. So I will promise you at the top, everything in this monologue is brand new information that if you're interested in the origins of coronavirus is vital to your understanding. As usual, absent the great Josh Rogan at the Washington Post, this has been completely ignored by the mainstream media. So. The new information concerning the circumstances of the origins of COVID comes from a new addendum by the House Foreign Affairs Committee, which has reviewed classified intelligence and included key new facts to our understanding of the timeline. The most stunning headline that comes from the report is this sentence, quote, the preponderance of evidence suggests SARS-CoV-2 was accidentally released from a Wuhan Institute of Virology laboratory sometime prior to September 12th, 2019. That's right, two months before reports indicate that researchers at the lab itself fell so sick they required hospitalization. Now, frankly, this statement stunned me, but it actually makes complete sense when they describe the cover-up and a new set of key facts. The report details how between 2 and 3 a.m. local time in Wuhan, China, the Wuhan Institute of Virology's online public database of samples and virus sequences was taken down mysteriously. That database contained key information about each sample in the lab, including what type of animal was collected, where it was collected, whether a virus was successfully isolated, and more. Now get this, to date, the database has not yet been put back online. The Chinese's only explanation in January of 2021 is the database was taken down for cyber attacks related to the pandemic, but it was taken down in September, so that doesn't make any sense. Right around this time, geospatial analysis from Harvard and Boston University found that the parking lot volume of all the hospitals in Wuhan had the highest daily volume of cars in the parking lot in September and October of 2019, far before the first reported cases of COVID. Now, that is along with a massive spike in search terms on the Chinese version of Google known as Baidu for the terms cough and diarrhea hmm. during those corresponding months. The third stunning data point revealed by the committee concerns the 2019 Military World Games. It was held in Wuhan on October 18th, 2019. The games are basically the Olympics, but for athletes in the military. There were 9,300 athletes with 109 countries that were represented there. Now, it wasn't noticed at the time, but several athletes at the games came down with what we now recognize as COVID-19 symptoms. The craziest part is this. The athletes remember now that Wuhan looked really weird at the time. One says he got his temperature taken at the airport. They also describe in October that the city of 15 million people looked like it was on lockdown. One Canadian athlete described this, quote, I got very sick 12 days after we arrived. Fever, chills, vomiting, insomnia. On our flight to come home, 60 Canadian athletes on the flight were put in isolation at the back of the plane for the 12-hour flight. We were sick with symptoms ranging from coughs to diarrhea and in between. Later analysis shows that Italy, Brazil, Sweden, and France says that they had patients within their borders who had COVID antibodies from before November 2019. All four countries had representatives at the games. All of the patients that had tested never left the country, indicating a common source of community spread within those countries that comes from a single point of origin. That's the circumstantial evidence. You can draw from it what you will. It seems pretty clear to me, personally. But the report doesn't stop there. It also delves into the cover-up on this side of the Pacific. It brings us to a familiar character, Dr. Peter Daszak of EcoHealth Alliance, who is the one who facilitated grant money from Dr. Fauci to the actual Wuhan lab. Daszak's relationship within the Wuhan lab and its top scientists goes all the way back to 2005, where the pair would go into bat caves to collect samples together. Now, the new report uncovers evidence that shows Daszak likely at the tip of the spear of a Chinese influence campaign in February of 2020. He organized a letter with scientific colleagues condemning, quote, conspiracy theories about the origins of the coronavirus. But what we now know is that Daszak organized that letter specifically at the behest of his former colleagues at the Wuhan lab who asked him for help in dismissing the theory. 
Now, I encourage you all to go and read this report for yourselves. The link will be down there in the description. But the most important part to me is this. Show me an iota of evidence on the other side for the natural origin hypothesis, which comes even close to everything I just laid out here. Which bat, how did it fly so far? Who was patient zero? Why would the Chinese government lie about this natural origin virus, but not the one that leaked from a lab? The preponderance of evidence points in a single direction, that the coronavirus leaked from the Wuhan lab sometime in late 2019. As we have stated repeatedly here, that doesn't just indict the Chinese government, it indicts our own for its complicity, and it indicts many of the so-called heroes of the pandemic, like Dr. Fauci. But most importantly, it indicts us all. Let's be honest, Trump and the media tore us apart during this pandemic. Masks, social distancing, restrictions, it all became part of a culture war, instead of something we were collectively trying to get through together. Both Trump and the media were so noxious and hateful towards each other that millions retreated into their corners to fight rather than to get through something. And of course, we can't agree on the facts when we see two different realities. The real tragedy is, I already know this monologue won't make much of a difference. I know most people who watch MSNBC or CNN will never care about the facts. They will think we're all racist for even pointing this out. And I know many right-wingers who support, purport to care, but don't actually. They just really hate Fauci. That's the real tragedy of the current media environment. The pandemic cost us $6 trillion globally. It killed millions of people. Hundreds of thousands of Americans are dead. It basically stopped life for nearly 18 months straight. Getting to the bottom of it is vitally important for mankind so we can avoid any of this in the future. And that was really my goal with this thing, uh, Crystal, is like, look. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right, just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut, our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it, you get to ask us questions, all that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.